1997, I got invited to the set of Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation, and this is the first time ever I'm releasing the full video footage of that trip. The first stop that we went to was getting our badges, and then it was going into their miles of sewers. Okay, it's not really miles of sewers. They got one manhole cover, and this is all the sewers they use for the next mutation. After going through there, we went and visited Dr. Queez's laboratory. This set was a changing set. It's been used as rooftops and many other things that you've seen in the next mutation. They tear down the room that's in there and put something else up. This is used in Trusting Dr. Queez and Meet Dr. Queez and Mutant Reflections. This device here is where the turtles came into the lab through. And this is the back of the lab, which you don't get to see much of. So we went out of there and we went and saw more of the open space area, like their blue screen, which is huge. He pointed that out to us and we walked on to our next room, which is where they build a lot of the stuff for the sets and the props. It's just a big workshop area. Also where they keep the Hummer, which I was very happy to see. This is the turtle's new car, which shocked me because I thought they'd have something a little more enclosed. After that, we walked outside and went to another warehouse right in the same alley where Dragon Lord's lair was. We got to walk in there and check it out. It was really cool. We saw a dead goat on a table, a fake dead goat, and their sign on the wall says a secure home is a happy home. Here, and uh, it was just an amazing set. I did not know what I was seeing at the time because we didn't know who Dragon Lord was back in July of 1997. After going through there, he walked us over around the corner down a little thin hallway here to their dressing room. This is where the turtles get into their costumes at. So as you can tell, there's not much in there, but it's what they need at every location they go to somewhere to get dressed. After that, we walked across the hall and off to our side was this little jail-like area. I think it's from All in the Family. And then we went up the steps into the turtle's lair. This here is one of my favorite areas we saw on the full trip. I mean, it was completely enclosed. It was amazing just walking through there because you knew it was a set. But if you closed all those doors, it could be an abandoned subway. It's really nice to just go in there and think, man, if I was one of the actors, it's easy to stay in character when the set looks this great. And this is the same subway layer that was used in Ninja Turtles 2 and Ninja Turtles 3. They just moved it up to Vancouver, British Columbia. Here's the ladder that goes how the turtles are supposed to come in and out of the layer, but there was nothing really up there. This is our badge. And then we headed to our next stop, which actually meant leaving the studios. But first, here is a wall that is used at the Ninja Turtles scale through the series. Now we're on a truck where they get the turtles in and out of costumes on on location shootings and we're getting to check out some Raphael costumes. They have one hero suit and two stunt double suits on this truck um, for a huge fight scene that was going to be recorded that night. After going through that we looked around there is some filming going on but I was just too much into the fact that we had these costumes in front of us. The costumes were done by Chico Brothers and they did a great job. Uh, I love that I actually fit the costumes. Every piece that I tried on fit me. We walked all across the street to where they were filming. Uh, that's Dr. Please over there. And this is Splinter's head. I was very shocked when Splinter's head appeared right in front of me for the chance to actually see it. This was an amazing trip. Uh, the scene they're filming is from the episode The Guest. It's the very beginning of the episode where Splinter and his friend Adrian bump into Dr. Queez on the streets and mix up the canes. It was just fascinating to be there. Uh, the director on that shoot was a guy who has worked on some Jackie Chan movies. Splinter was awesome. Getting to meet and interact with Splinter was just amazing. And seeing the costume, we've learned so much about the costumes here. They use... Uh, blow dryer 
uh, on the cold setting to blow cold air into the actors inside the suit so that they can still get cool air and cool off because it is extremely hot in those costumes. Uh, that's the puppeteering station which is not too far away so they can have full visual of what they need to see. And there's Dr. Cornelius Quees with his script. After sitting there and going through the script and working on the, the set area, we walked around. It was funny to watch Quees because he would go so in character that he would keep the character going. But we left there and headed to the next shooting spot later that night where we're going to have the fight scene with Raph and the rank. And this was hours of waiting is what I'm going to call this. We got there kind of early, as you can see the sun's up, and just hung around the trailers, the costumes, and it was just hanging out till finally the sun's down and we're going to start seeing costumes appearing. As Mitch, who is the actor who plays Raphael, is suiting up in his costume, I got to sit off to the side and observe this. This was just fascinating to me because I always enjoyed costume work. I grew up in a family that made costumes. So seeing this was just, it's my dream job to be the person inside a suit. And it doesn't matter if it's a turtle costume or some weird alien for a movie or a TV show. I love to wear costumes. So seeing how these costumes were put together and how much work it was just to put them on was fascinating. And I'm very, very happy I got this experience. And I'm glad I'm able to share some of it. As you can tell, the recording is a bit choppy. You don't get everything because the camera would leave the, the situation or go off elsewhere. But I stood there in the door of that truck the full time watching them suit up and seeing the different costumes and how they had them on. After that, we got led to the back lot, which was in between two buildings where the filming was taking place. And the job here was Raph is coming out of a sewer. The funny thing is, this is a real sewer that he's climbing out of. They had to take the legs off the costumes because there's sewer water inside the sewer. They have him getting ready for that. We get to see the rank playing around on the car and goofing off. And we got to see a lot of Dr. Queez walking around us. We talked with a lot of people there. As Mitch would sit there with the head of the costume as they're preparing him. They're tucking in all the wires and stuff so the face can work right there. The puppeteering station is on the other side from where we're standing. Because I, I went to both sides. And I, for a little bit there I stood behind the puppeteer so that I could see the video footage because that showed exactly what the cameras were going to be showing for the TV show. There, they're making this little dolly thing so that the uh, camera can roll back and forth and stay on the same track. And uh, now, Raph is in the sewers coming out. In this episode, he's coming out complaining about Andre, and he bumps into Dr. Quees, and he calls him Dr. Do Evil and his fire-breathing nurses. It's just, wow. And a lot of memories attached to this video footage right here because uh, this trip was still feels like a dream. It's hard to think that I was actually there for this. This is a big fight scene that we have coming up, but we don't have any footage of that. This is the next day. We got to go over, and there's Jared, who plays Michelangelo. And uh, we're going to the fight scene with all four turtles. We don't have any footage of that. What we do have is this little bit here where it was just like a little meet and greet talking. And then we walked over and got a little bit of footage of where the fight scene takes place during the daylight, but then we were asked to turn our cameras off. I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, sorry it was all fast forward, but uh, trying to fit it all into 10 minutes meant a lot had to be sped up. And uh, I'm glad I finally got to share it.